Good morning. You're looking very tan. This is...
Please be seated. You're very welcome to St. Patrick's this morning. It, it's great to, to be together. I am very aware that I've, my phone has been tinging in the background, um, informing me that people are stuck in traffic. So really, I'm trying to hold your attention for as long as I can. I, I, um, the, uh, I did tell them I would hold off for a few minutes, which is why I was out uh, slightly later there. But um, they, they are, uh, I have the phone has been been tinging, so please, um, please, please, bear with me. Uh, so I'm going to read these announcements as slowly as I possibly can. Um, first of all, to say that the magazine is is ready. Um, there are some copies in the back. I want to say a big thank you to James and Geraldine for, for putting that together. For for um, uh, for for uh, to Stuart for his. His article on a dog, which is on the dog, uh, it's just worth ha worth having a look at, um, and for all our organisations for putting stuff together. It's great to to have this this little um, this little magazine outlining what's what, what's going on. If you don't get it, um, we have online or um, or physical uh, physical copies. Uh, but just um, I'm sure one of the church wardens. Can get you a copy, or, or Geraldine can get you a copy, or, or Alan can email you something, or, or, or we'll get it all sorted. Um, but please do um, have a look at that. Um, moving on to the, the screens, as you came in, you'll have seen some of the announcements coming on, but I want to highlight a few particularly. Um, the first of those is the, the church family barbecue in Carnphonic. It's one of the highlights of our year. Um, it really, we, we're all going to meet at four o'clock in Carnphonic, uh, and that'll be sort of more of a, a chatting and, and getting beside each other. There's a play park so the kids can play. Uh, and then at five o'clock, we're going to go down for, uh, for a barbecue. Uh, I think it's, uh, I'm looking at Innes here, burgers and sausages, um, no steak? No steak. No steak, all right. Um, we'll have a wee conversation afterwards. <laughs> um, um, we'll get some peppered onions going. Um, but uh, there is a, a barbecue, there, there'll be a barbecue at five, and then there is a, a, a water fight as well after that, um, where I usually at one point think that I'm going to drown. Um, so please do join us for that. There are, is a sign-up sheet at the back, uh, just so we have a rough idea of who's coming. Um, alternately, you can also uh, message, uh, message Pauline on the, the WhatsApp group and she can uh, take your, 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 your order, is probably the right word to use. Um, but please, please, please do join us for that. It's a great time to, to, to be together. And really, I think it would be wonderful to be together across the generations. Um, so I know it's a good bit of way, but please do try to, to come out and, and join us. Um, and if nothing else, you can laugh at me being no doubt soaked by a, by a psychotic charlotte um, at some point. Um, then I want to draw your attention to this evening at 5pm where we'll be uh, hosting Cantamus uh, Choir who will be singing a choral evensong for us. Um, choral evensong I think is one of the most moving and reflective. It's a, it's a lovely form of Anglican worship. Um, it, it really is, is beautiful. Um, um, the idea is that the entire service is sung. Um, I used to do it in Belfast Cathedral. Um, I offered, my, I offered my, uh, my services to Cantamus, and they said, no, you're okay, we'll bring our own. Um, but please uh, do join us for that. That's at 5 p.m., a um, service of, of choral evensong. Uh, this uh, this evening, <laughs> hopefully we'll get the traffic sorted out by then. Um, um, but uh, please do join us for that. Um, another highlight of the year is Children's Day. It's a day when we celebrate the children's ministry in our parish and celebrate our our, our young people. Um, <clears throat> this has kind of been a service that we've almost had to sort of slowly bring back after after COVID. Um, and I think this year they're, they're actually doing a little play for us. They're singing songs for us. And the children are really leading the service. So I really would highlight to you this one to you. There is also prize giving. 
Um, so any, any children who has been to our Sunday club um, is, w will get a prize. Um, there's also a few extras. Um, if, you, if there's, a disc, if there's a, an angry sibling um, before uh, under, under nursery school. So there are still a few prizes there, um, but please do uh, join us for that on the 11th of June. It really will be a lovely service together. Um, I have to say I'm a very proud dad because Henry has his first speaking part. Um, I'm not convinced he's going to speak, but um, we've been working on how he is green and green is the best because green is the colour of the grass. Um, so please do join. That's something to watch out for. Uh, please do join us for that. Um, I think I think that's that's our, our primary announcements for um, today. Um, we're going to take a few moments just of quiet to to quietly still our hearts. Um, again, I'm very aware that people have been held up with traffic, so if people do slip in, please please do so and don't let that uh, put you off. We take a few moments of silence. I'm going to stand to sing our, our first hymn, hymn 321, Holy, Holy, Holy. Please be seated. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. 
Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ says. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment and the second is like unto it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us and write these your laws in our hearts. God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to intercede for us in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us then confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace. Almighty God, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned in thought and word and deed and in what we have left undone. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy upon us and forgive us, that we may walk in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness and keep us in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, I'm going to invite you now to stand as we say the, the Gloria. I invite you to stand. Glory to God in the highest. Glory to God in the highest. And peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. My colleague for today, Trinity Sunday. Almighty and everlasting God, you have given us your servants grace by the confession of a true faith to acknowledge the glory of the eternal Trinity and in the power of the divine majesty to worship the unity. Keep us steadfast in his, this faith, that we may evermore be defended from all adversaries, for you to live and reign, one God, forever and ever. Amen. I'm going to invite Gavin up for our reading from Second Corinthians. Finally, brothers, rejoice, aim for restoration, comfort one another, agree with one another, live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss, all the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. We're going to respond to God's words in the words of our next hymn, hymn 316, Bright the Vision That Delighted.
remain standing as James brings us our gospel reading. The Gospel is written in the 28th chapter of the Gospel according to St. Matthew, beginning at the 16th verse. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee, into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given to me in heaven, and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. This is the Gospel of Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Please, okay, okay. Please be seated. <clears throat> Final instructions always bring with them a, a, an added impetus, don't they? There's an added authority to them because final instructions highlight what is important. When somebody, what some, they tell us what somebody wants us to do in their absence, their, their final wishes, they highlight what is important to the speaker. And so we should pay particular attention to today's readings because both of these readings record final instructions. <clears throat> In 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 11 to 13, those words that Gavin read for us, we hear Paul's final instructions to the Corinthian church. In Matthew chapter 28, verses 16 to 20, those words that, that James read for you, it's Jesus' final instructions to the disciples. Both of these readings reflect what is important to their speaker. They, they show what Paul and, and Jesus expect from the church. These verses give us Paul and Jesus' priorities for the church. And so today we need to sit up and take notice, asking ourselves, do we conform and shape, us, shape ourselves around those final instructions? And those Priorities, those instructions are both inward and outward. Paul's words in, in 2 Corinthians are reflective of, of how a church is to interact within itself. His final instructions are to strive for full restoration, encourage one another, be of one mind, live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. Paul's vision for the church is to be a supportive community that encourages one another in their walk, in, their, in the way of truth, in their walk with God. And it seeks to be united around that gospel. Those two themes incorporate so much of the New Testament's teaching of what a church should look like. Amanda Eidelman wrote that we are called to grow together in unity over time. To grow in unity. And this morning, I want to briefly pull out those two ideas. Encouraging one another in our faith and living in peace and unity together. I don't know about you, but... Um, if you, but have you ever seen those geese in a flying V honking as they go? Now, I'm, I'm no ornith ornithologist, but I've been told that the reason that they do that is to encourage the goose at the front. Flying in a, in a V reduces wind, wind resistance, 
But that means that the, the goose at the front is, is taking the full whack, the full brunt of the resistance. And the wind is hitting them as they, they fly, that bird at the front. And so the geese behind honk to, to encourage them, to, to tell them to, to keep going. The, the honking of, of geese are words of encouragement. And that's a picture of what a church should look like. Throughout the New Testament, we read time and time again that the church is to be an encouraging community, pushing one another in our, on in our walk with God. So in, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 10 and 11, um, we hear Paul say, He died for us so that we, whether we are awake or asleep, we may live with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up, just as you are in fact doing. Do you see the logic of those verses? Jesus died for us to bring us back to him. And therefore, we need to encourage one another in the light of that. To encourage one another to hold on to faith, to keep going, to keep growing. And then moving to the letter to the Hebrews in, in chapter 3, verse 13, we read, But let us encourage one another as long as the day is called today, so that you may be not hardened by sin's deceitfulness. It's a reminder of that role of the church to encourage and to keep each other going, to keep one another following Jesus. And that idea continues in, in Hebrews chapter 10, verses 11 to 15, where we read, But let us hold unswavingly to the hope we profess, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how we may spur one another towards love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. Authentic Christianity is hard. And Jesus warns us of that. It's difficult to walk a life of faith with Jesus Christ. But the, the role of the church is to encourage one another to keep going. To stand firm. To keep growing. There's an old analogy that describes the Christian as a burning coal. The Christian, um, where the, where the Christian burns with faith. It's, their faith is alive when it's among other people, among other Christians. But remove it from the fire, remove the coal burns out. If you take a leap, loop of coal out of a fire, eventually it will simmer and die. And so it is with us. We burn with faith when we have the encouragement of our, of our fellowship uh, uh, with fellow Christians. When we come together to encourage one another. And <clears throat> but, but, but when you take us away from that, when you take us away from the fire of the church, then that faith starts to die. It needs to be rekindled, to be back among other burning coals, among other burning Christians. It's a wonderful opportunity to have worship online, to be together and to still be able to connect. It really is. But it's a poor substitute for being physically together, physically encouraging one another. I often hear the comment, well, I can worship at home. And that's not even in terms of the online worship. Uh, but that's not what church, or that's not all what church is about. We come to meet together as much as we come to meet with God. Friends, those final instructions point us to being a community that grows together, encouraging one another in faith. 
to be a community that encourages each other to keep going, to stand firm, and to keep growing. And and that encouragement requires peace. It it requires us to live in an attitude of of mutual flourishing. Dare I even say self-giving. Leonard Ravenhill said, church unity comes from corporate humility. And Jesus calls us to that sort of self-giving humility that abandons our status and wants and instead seeks to support one another. Having washed the disciples' feet, taking the role of a slave and then going to die for them, Jesus says these words to his disciples, the the earliest church. My command to you is this. Love each other as I have loved you. No greater love has, has no one than this, than to lay down one's life for one's friends. This is my command. Love one another. A church is to be a community marked by by self-giving. A, a community of people that don't demand to have things their, my way, but rather lovingly asks, how can I contribute to the flourishing of others? How can I make them grow in the faith? How can I encourage them to keep going, to stand firm and to keep growing? A sort of love abandons labels and, and difference. It is marked by a togetherness around Jesus Christ that transcends all other loyalties. Within the authentic church, it doesn't matter of our past or background. It doesn't matter how long we've been members of that community or what went on before. It pays no heed to status or or position. But instead, We are to seek to serve one another in love, in a a way that lets each other flourish, in a way that encourages one another. Friends, baptismal water is thicker than blood. It brings us together into a peaceful, loving community marked by corporate humility that that Leonard Ravenhill points to, a community that encourages one another. A community bounded by a metaphysical indwelling for each other in a loving, caring relationship. I suppose on this Trinity Sunday, the Trinity is 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 a picture of what a church should look like. The church should look like God, three in one, marked by mutual indwelling with one another. Our interdependence should mirror that triune God living in mutual love and peace with one another. After all, Jesus, God the Son, prayed to God the Father, the second member of the Trinity to the first, He said these, prayed these words, as you have sent me into the world, I have sent them into the world. My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who believe in me through their message, that all of them may be one, Father, just as you are in me and I am in you. Do you see the mirroring? That they may also be, that the world may believe, that you have sent me to all of them, that they may be one. Father, just as you and you are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. There's two mirrorings there, isn't there? The loving unity of the Trinity being mirrored in the church but also the sending of the Son is mirrored in the sending of the church. That brings us back to those final instructions of Jesus in Matthew's Gospel. 
Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. Not only are we to be a church that interacts with one another with love, peace and encouragement, but we're also required to reach out to those around us, to be sent sharing the message of Jesus with all we come into contact with. To be an outward-looking community that seeks to build God's kingdom in this place. I, I've spoken a lot about the need to be faithful, outward-looking mission, uh, and mission-shaped church. And time constraints mean that I'm not going to push it any further. You'll be relieved to know. But I want to bring us back to remember that we did commit ourselves in 2019 to a mission statement. That we as a church would be a people that share God's love <clears throat> with the community by welcoming those who come through the door and serving those outside it. Final instructions are important. They reinforce what is important to the speaker. And those words of Paul and Jesus remind us what we need to be as a church. To be a community that interacts with one another with love and encouragement that seeks to grow together in unity. And that, look, that also that looks to the world around us with a heartfelt desire to see Jesus proclaimed, to see people come to know him as their Lord and Saviour. On this Trinity Sunday, may we mirror those Trinitarian ideas of unity and sending as we grow in discipleship, encouraging one another together. Amen. And now to the King of Ages, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honour and glory forever and ever. Amen. We're going to respond um, with the words of the proclaiming our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. So I ask you, would you please stand? We believe. We believe, we believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light of light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. He was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again to judge the, the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We're going to stand, or remain standing to sing our offertory hymn, um, 398, Hallelujah, Sing to Jesus.
please be seated as, as Julie leads us in prayer. Let us pray. Ever one, sacred three, holy God, the Trinity. O God beyond us, lead us forward to pray. O God beside us, teach us to gently pray. O God within us, still our hearts to pray. Lord, we pray today for your church, carrying a gospel of forgiveness and freedom that is so much needed in our world. Thank you for those with the gift of sharing this good news in evangelism. Thank you for those with the gift of sharing this good news in the way they live. Give us the courage and the willingness to be your witnesses in ways that are generous and respectful and which come from the overflow of our love and delight in you. Fill us with your love so that the world may believe. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray today for the countries where there is war, violence or fragile peace. Give to those who are trying to make peace an inner certainty of their calling and constant patience in their negotiations. May hearts which have been darkened by violence discover a different light and a better way. May the ways of diplomacy and the ways of forgiveness <coughs> coincide at the table. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for the spiritual health and welfare of our community. First, for the well-being of this, our church community, that we may be a spiritual family, a household of faith, where people are welcomed and nourished. But we pray also for the social community of which we are part, that you would make it a place where all can flourish, and the weak be cared for, where there is harmony and celebration and true pride. We pray particularly for those who lead this community by election, by position, or by popularity. May their leadership be that of the servant and their goals those of your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are going through times of trouble, some perhaps in our families, some in our church, and some in our wider group of friends. We know you to be both Lord and healer of our group of world. And we ask you to touch with your generous love all those here on our hearts today because of their special need. We bring before you Desi, Andrew, Desi, Katie, Rodney, Jean, Katie, Irene, Roy, Rebecca, Helen, Bobby, Kate, Katie and Robin. May your love flood their lives with hope and healing in spirit, mind and body. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Finally, Lord, into your hands we commit those who have run the race and kept the faith, even if that faith was known only to you and now have gone to their reward. May your light shine upon them forever and our lives be richer because of their memory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O God beyond us, give us faith. O Christ beside us, give us peace. O Spirit within us, give us life. Merciful Father, merciful Father, accept these our prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. We continue in prayer to pray the prayer of humble access. We do not presume. We do not presume to come to this thy table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. 
we are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table. But thou art the same Lord, whose profiture is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. How can I repay the Lord for all the benefits that he has given to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Would you please stand? Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us celebrate the feast. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, Lord of all creation, we praise you for your goodness and your love. When we turned away, you did not reject us. You came to meet us in your Son, <clears throat> welcomed us as your children, and prepared a table where we might feast with you. In Christ you shared our life, that we may live in him and he in us. He opened wide his arms upon the cross, <laughs> love stronger than death, he made the perfect sacrifice for sin. Lord Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, on the night before you died, you came to table with your friends. Taking bread, you give thanks, broke it, and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Lord Jesus, we bless you. You are the bread of life. At the end of supper, you took the cup of wine, gave thanks, and said, Drink ye all of you, for this is the blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as in remembrance of me. Lord Jesus, we bless you. You are the true vine. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Lord Jesus, come in glory. Holy Spirit, giver of life, come upon us now. May this bread and wine be to us the body and blood of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us who know our need of grace, one in Christ, our risen Lord. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, blessed Trinity, with your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving and lift our voice to join in the song of heaven, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Lord Anna in the heart. Thanks be to you, our God, for your gift beyond words. Amen, amen, amen. And as our Saviour Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The bread which we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. Share in one bread. Jesus Christ is the Lamb of God who has taken away the sins of the world. 
Happy are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. Happy the body of Christ keeps you in his power. Hmm.
Merciful Father, you give us Jesus Christ to be the bread of life, that those who come to him should never hunger. Draw us to our Lord in faith and love, that we may eat and drink with him at his table in the kingdom where he is alive and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. And we say together, Almighty God, Almighty God, thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. The peace of God which passeth all understanding Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. We're going to stand to sing our final hymn, hymn 370, Stand Up and Bless the Lord. Uh, since before the pandemic. Uh, so in a moment or two, I'm going to ask you all to leave, please, by the door in the Buckner aisle. Uh, and then once you're clear of the church door, please go back to your business in the normal way. Thank you very much indeed. Would you please now leave the church? And so I bid you go in great haste to love and serve the Lord. <laughs> Amen.